time we played that All Star Guitar Night. Way too long night. ago. <laughs> uh, was it Ryman Auditorium, I think? Yep. All Star Guitar Night. Absolutely. Uh, anyone give a year for that? <laughs> Two thousand something. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I think it was out of the nineteen hundreds. I think it was yeah, into the two thousands. We were into yes. the two thousands, just barely. Just, I, think. I think. Long time, but just. You sound great as always. Oh, you do. I forget what a great bass player you are. I mean, now that you're, you know, Mr. President, we have to call you now president of... Yeah, uh, just don't Newman. play Hail to the Chief. I've heard that too many times. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> president of Nashville Musicians Union, and you were the president of the entire union uh, at the time that I brought um, Lucas George uh, to, uh, to see Jack Pearson. Yeah. Yes, uh, that was at the... Um, Station Inn, yeah. and uh, he was producing the Nashville TV show at that time. I ran into right. him uh, on an airplane once and told him, well, you got to see where, where real musicians go, oh, yeah. see how it's the really Station done. Station Inn is so uh, I say, yeah, we... pretty much, uh, you know, the, the heart and soul of acoustic music that if you blink, you'll miss it, but if you know about it, it feels like the Empire State Building. Yeah. And so, <laughs> I love the station. Yeah. It was something, and you know, and, and sure enough, just like I told him, first two rows were all musicians leaning forward there, to, <laughs> just tr trying to catch everything that Jack did, oh, yeah. including you. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, he said, look at that, that's the, the, the president of our entire <laughs> union hanging out in a bar. Yeah, said, yeah, well, you know, that's where I started. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. been quite a journey. I've been in Nashville 46 years, and uh, you know, I was a military kid, so the longest we lived anywhere was eight years. But most of the time, it was a year or two, and move on to somewhere else. So this is this is my home in many ways, in yes. every way. And you have been part of the A team, played with all the greats over the, so I'm many stories. Really, really fortunate. Uh, you know, I, I one door just led to another door, and and so many random encounters turned into something really significant and I think that's what I say a lot of times if I go talk to students and stuff is you got to trust your gut you know listen to that voice inside because yeah. if you stop listening it may stop talking and uh -huh. and so I've you know I, I got an electric upright bass and got a lot of weird looks until a few years later when I played a big slide and everybody thought I invented fretless bass it's like <laughs> no I didn't I was copying a German bass player named Eberhard Weber that, who I loved, oh, film, yes. you know, and, and was my inspiration, and it ended up becoming a, uh, you know, a signature thing for me. So you just never know. And, and you know, Chet Atkins, I got to work with Chet because David Hungate, who used to live right around the corner, yeah. fell down his yard and broke his ankle uh, mowing his yard and didn't want to go to Texas to do a TV special and recommended me to take his place. And that's how I met Chet. And in the end, you know, I got to be kind of friends with him, and, and he recorded uh, the song that I co-wrote with Emily Cates called The Day the Bass Players Took Over the World. Oh, he came yes. to see me play one that. night. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, Chet Atkins is in the audience. I better be good. <laughs> and he called me the next day and asked about that funny song you did, and then he recorded it with Tommy Emanuel right? as The with Day Finger players. Pickers. The, finger pickers the Day Finger yes. Pickers Took Over the World, and it became it was the title track of his final album. I mean, how lucky was that? All because David Hungate fell down the hill. <laughs> so I've always, every time I see David, I'm like, thank you for falling down the hill. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's, Nashville's an amazing place and it just shows you that music can make the world smaller. It just can make these things happen that wouldn't happen any other way. And I'm, I'm so grateful and so blessed for that. You know, if you, you know, go to a, a show where, where Dave's playing live or uh, some of the videos that you can find, the way you move on stage is so cool. I mean, I have like, no control over that. That's so <laughs> it's just, I said, whoa, that's just a, a guy who feels it and moves with it. I just, I love the way you move on stage. Yeah, I, I, I just, I've never presence. really been able to help myself. I kept trying to get away from the string bass because it was so hard to dance with the string bass, but yet I, I never could get away from it. But yeah, I, I don't know what that is. It's just, I, I, because I'm not a, really a very good dancer unless I have a bass in my hand. So you never know. <laughs> well, it was just nice to play that with you after all these years. You know? Absolutely. Oh, here. Uh, who knows the name of that tune? Bing, bing, bing. Let me, let me look at comments if uh, anyone caught the name of that tune and where it came from. That is Fantasia de Fuego. And uh, do you want to know the story behind that, Absolutely. that tune? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> okay. I wrote this one a long time ago, and I had envisioned the place where you took the solo in there. I had envisioned uh, Lorendo Almeida doing this kind oh, of wow. flamenco, uh, you know, lead up high there. And I heard at that time that Lorendo Almeida was living in Los Angeles. Right. So I went to the payphone, okay, that 
tells you yeah. how long ago this was. <laughs> and, I, and I called the operator and said, I'm just curious, is there a Lorendo Almeida in, in Los Angeles? And she said, I'm looking. Uh, I'm connecting you. And I said, wait. And he says, hello. I said, Mr. Almeida, yes. And, yes. and I said, well, I just wrote this song that's calling for your music in the middle. And uh, he, he said, oh, thank you very much. And, uh, and I said, I'm coming to Los Angeles next week for the NAMM show. And he says, well, I'll pick you up at the airport. We'll go to my studio and we'll record it. And I said, what? <laughs> so it was like, If you, you know, don't ask, you can't have. <laughs> yeah, so, and you know, this was before I was playing concerts or anything. I was just doing a, a hotel lobby gig. And so I thought, man, this is gonna be great. And I, I'm on the airplane thinking, you know, maybe I should have looked up a photo of him. So I had no idea what he looks like. <laughs> I'd only heard his music. That's great. And I get to the airport. There's this guy meeting me, and I'm th he's you know kind of middle aged. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, wouldn't he be older at this time? What's wrong with this picture? And we're in his car on the way to his studio, and he says, "Well, I'm so happy you want me to play cello on your album." And it was Valdemar Almeida, no oh, relation. Oh no! <laughs> and so, like, what do Mistaken I do? Mistaken <laughs> identity. <laughs> so that's a I, great story. I finally had to fess <laughs> up, and and I said, "But don't worry, we'll we'll just jam, and it'll be fun." And I'd never played with a cello before, and it was great fun. He he played with a symphony. It was first chair. I mean, he was a great player. Incredible, meant to be. And so, <laughs> uh, so a couple years later, uh, a couple few years later, I'd written an entire album of music for guitar and cello. Uh, it's called uh, New Classics for Guitar and Cello. And right. eventually looked him up when I came back to Los Angeles. We did a live radio show and performance of Meant that to Be. Music. That's a great story. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we have so many of these stories, uh, you especially. Uh, but I have a couple of announcements that I'm supposed to make. Otherwise, I will forget by the end of this. Uh, and, and those of you who are in the Illinois area, uh, Downers Grove, I'm playing a little interactive concert this coming Saturday. Um, that's, uh, is that this coming Saturday? Wow, Saturday before Easter. Yeah, yeah. that's this coming Saturday already. And then I uh, want you to have a very happy Easter. Don't want to forget that. And Monday is going to be the listening party. I'm going to be doing a band camp listening party uh, for the new digital release and radio release of Sailing Dreams. That's so. not April Fool's. It's really going to happen. It's really. <laughs> yeah, okay. Just because it is. It is April Fool's. You're right. <laughs> So it's going to be right after Monday Live. So tune in on Monday Live, and then we'll do the listening party to get together right after. Uh, so I think that's all the important announcements. And you have uh, a, an article coming out in Premier yeah, Guitar. Premier Guitar. I think it's the May issue. Um, yeah. And it's a really, I've seen preview of it, and it's, it's very interesting because it talks a lot about my two worlds, which are music and the union. And, and he, this writer, uh, Luke Ottentoff, uh, very uh, connected the two in a very interesting way. And, and I'm I'm really pleased to have it have it come out and, you know I, I got involved with the union very gradually over the years. You know it started with, you know kind of hey you know like why are you guys hassling us for playing these gigs, where we play for the door and we're not we no we don't get a guarantee, but that's because we have to make our own crowd and people are showing up and we're making more than scale, and it just it was like, they were suggesting that forging a contract was a, a solution and I'm like I got two kids that are I'm trying to teach to tell the truth what if we just write a bylaw that says when playing original music in a listening room the band leader can be yeah. the employer and we can file a contract and it was like oh yeah great oh. and and that kept happening where it's like you know there are solutions to There's these creative problems solutions. you know I was a member of the Chicago Musicians Union for many many years mm -hmm. and that was back in the day where it just looked and tasted and smelled like a mafia <laughs> organization. Well, yeah. I mean, it was <laughs> yeah. it was just it didn't do anything for us at that time that uh, where I was concerned and we'd get these big notices, you know, big X, do not play with this yeah. player who didn't pay his dues, you know. And yeah. It was very um, threatening. Old, yeah, old it, school in a way that yeah. I've, I've, I never liked. And Nashville always had a little bit of the flavor of, hey, you know, and part of it's because Tennessee is a right to work, or as we say, right to work for less state. But it's just when, they, when the labels came here in the 1950s, they hired musicians to run the labels. And they, Chet Atkins and Owen yeah, Bradley. Okay. And they said, hey, these are our friends. We're going to be playing with them at the country club on Saturday night. So if we're going to use them on all these records you want to make money on, we're going to pay them through the union and do it right. And because yeah. of that, when Mazda uses a Patsy Cline record from 1962, we're able to get 
people and their beneficiaries that they passed away paid. And it feels so good. It, but yeah. but and so I've always tried to get away from that whole stereotype and you know, we we came up with a home studio scale and they told us for years you can't pay into your own pension. And I said, "What if there's a box on the contract that says just like the other thing, employer agrees that musician may make pension payment on behalf of employer." And the pension fund went, "Sure, that's fine." And it was like You've told us all these years we can't do that. We can do that. You yeah. just have to think about it and be creative. So it's it's a lot like playing music, but it's just on the bureaucratic side. And my older brother and sister are lawyers, so that oh, may have something to so do. Oh, so you you know about it? I was the automatic black sheep of the family playing bass. You know. <laughs> when I came over to Nashville and then switched over to Nashville Union, it's a whole different feel already. You know, and it was you know a friendly feel, and that yeah. and we do fun things. You know, you have uh, you know host events, the, yeah. inter, the international workshops, events, workshops, workshops, world music cool. workshops, and we have a songwriter musician workshop to try to create the kind of interplay that used to happen when demo sessions were the norm, where you'd have seven musicians coming in and recording five, six songs in three hours with a songwriter, and, and now as people record with their computers and make tracks, it's different, so we're trying to create that interaction, and it's really fun to see the light bulb go off, of both for the players and the writers, because it's that interplay that made Nashville so special. All these writers that came here, and some of them became great artists, and, and you know, there's a lot of different paths, and we just try to keep as many of these roads open as we can and eliminate the roadblocks. Right. Well, I would love to do one of your songs. You have written some cool songs. Um, well, thank so you. So what, uh, yeah, what would you like to, to do? We'll do one. Well, I... I uh, my, uh, my wonderful lady is Regina McCrary from the McCrary Sisters, and they've been singing in Nashville since they were little girls, literally. She won her first Grammy at the age of nine, oh, and her and her wow. sisters were uh, out singing backup for Willie Nelson on his 90th birthday party at the Hollywood Bowl, two sold-out nights, four-hour shows, everybody from Tom Jones to Dave Matthews to... You know, Roseanne Cash, Nora Jones, I mean, an amazing lineup of people. And then Willie would come out and hold court at the end. And so I just, this song just kind of fell out of the sky. Of, on the second day, I was waiting for my son, who lives out there now in Hollywood, to come pick me up. And this song just happened. I wrote 90% of it in about five minutes. And I recorded it. It is my latest single on Apple Music. And uh, oh, let me grab a pick. Then. I've got I've got Rob Ike's uh, playing dobro on it, and oh, wonderful. actually playing his granddad's Montgomery Ward, nineteen twenty six guitar with the Cowboys painted on it that he oh. turned into a dobro. And Pat Bergeson played harmonica, channeling a little Mickey Raphael. Oh, and uh, cool. and so it's just a, it's a little thank you song to Willie Nelson called Thinking About Willie. I'll try to follow you okay. along. And you will. It goes like this. I'm thinking about Willie and all he has done and all that he's given with his life of song. He's 90 years old and 20 years young. I'm thinking about Willie all he has done He's still an outlaw Ahead of his time He wrote the songs That live in our minds Sings from the heart In his Texas way And gave us much more Than we could ever repay I'm thinking about Willie and all he has done And all that he's given in his life of song He's 90 years old but 20 years young I'm thinking about Willie and all he has done done it all and made his own rules. He's still a dreamer, but nobody's fool. Brother to Bobby and buddy to Paul. He takes care of his people and he loves us all. At his birthday party, we all had a ball I'm thinking 
about Willie and all he has done and all that he's given with his life of song. He's 90 years old, but 20 years young. I'm thinking about Willie and all he has done. I'm thanking you, Willie. Thinking about Willie. We love you, Willie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what an amazing person! And how amazing that uh, you got to go to his birthday party and yeah, hang with him. Yeah, you those know, and I, I played on, got to play on a record with Willie. Yeah. And uh, was his band leader one night at the Ryman for the when they had the uh, Chet Atkins Musician Days. I got to be a three-song band leader for Willie Nelson, John Fogarty, and Dwayne Eddy. Oh, Pretty good gig. <laughs> that is a great gig. Something else that you can add to your resume that you may not know is that you did get one vote in the last presidential election for president. <laughs> that was from me. I did you as a write-in. <laughs> All because right. I mean, that's what we need is somebody 50 to run the to country <laughs> the way you've been working well, for the union. You know, I mean, you I, just I, such a, did such a good job. Oh, seriously, I did write him in. You know? Oh, that, so. that's, that's, <laughs> I, I, I think I remember you telling me that now. <laughs> okay. you, know, you know, the thing is, it's all about treating each other with respect and recognizing that we're not all the same, but we all have way more in common than we have differences. And I think we're living in a world where people want to get pushed to either side and it's all in the middle, said yeah. the bass player. Yeah. You're rushing, you're dragging, <laughs> it's right here in the middle. It's the same thing. Yeah. So I just, you know, to me it's, it's, and really a lot of it comes back to Don Williams, who I worked with full time for 14 years and for another 20 years off and on, filling in for my replacement. And, and he treated us right, he treated us good. He went to his record label and got us a record deal. Nobody does that for their road band. And it was back when a road band and the studio players were totally different. Yeah. And he started using us on the records. And I learned how to play in the studio because Don would say, hey, if you want to come by and listen. And I would just sit in the back and try to absorb it all. And, and every now and then they'd ask me what I thought. And I'd say, well, you could turn up the bass a little bit. <laughs> but Don really opened the doors for me in so many ways and in such a a laid back way I didn't realize until it later that a lot of my friends were working for people that didn't treat them that way and that that should be the norm is treat people how you want to be treated to yeah. me that's just karma you know good vibes whatever you want to call it so I, I hope we can get back to that in this country and around yeah. the world because we shouldn't be there you hurting go. See, each see other. why I voted for him I, I you know <laughs> To me, it's right. a no-brainer, but maybe that's because I have no brain. <laughs> but I still have a heart, you know. Well, I care. Yeah. It's you yeah. know, absolutely. Well, uh, I remember going in the studio with Susie Bogus, and uh, the first time I met her was when she was recording with Chet Atkins, uh, their album together. Yeah. And uh, that's right. I got I, to play on on one of those songs, oh. uh, "All My Lovin'." We did oh. a version of "All My Lovin'" that was really sweet. Yeah. And and yeah, Susie's wonderful. I've, I've known her and Doug Kreider a long time. In fact, Doug was the engineer on a lot of the first demo sessions I ever did. So, you know, he, he put up with me and taught oh, me a lot, you know, yeah. so I love them both. They're great people. Yeah, they really they are. Really and are. Susie can, can make some soup, I tell you that. She's got a new cookbook, a soup cookbook, and there is some awesome, awesome A soup, soup book. I yes, yeah. So everyone go out and get Susie Boggess' soup, soup cookbook. But she uh, sang on the um, the new single that's out now. This, this is the first time I've ever done a single. I've always done just albums. So first single is, is uh, Sailing Dream. That's the one that came entirely in a dream. And complete with Susie's voice singing. I love it. But uh, according to Nashville rules, so I did change two of the words in the first verse, so I consider myself co writer. There you go. On this song, yes. <laughs> this is uh, Sailing Dream. I like to sail the world. I 
Chet, I feel Chet's spirit there. <laughs> well, I had a band, he'd be in it. That's right. That's right. Yeah. The, tour, the touring band. So, yeah. Why don't you come with me Saturday to Illinois? I uh, miss the road. I, I will say, you know, those, yeah. those couple hours in a day in a town you've never been before, before sound check, where you can just walk around and see what's up. Yeah. I, I miss that. I really do. I mean, with, with uh, you know, with Don, we did a lot of tours of England. And I had oh. lived in England as a kid and then lived there for a year when I was 20. I moved there to become a rock and roll star, which obviously didn't happen. <laughs> I wouldn't be here. But it was so great to be able to go back to England and go, hey, remember me? I used to sleep on your couch. Uh, we're playing the Albert Hall. Uh, your name's at the door. I'll see you at the pub after the gig. I mean, that was oh, so much fun. Oh, neat. So I miss yeah. the road. I mean, I, I travel with the union stuff because I'm also vice president now of the whole thing, and I've been on the board for a while. So, I, But it's mostly New York, Los Angeles, occasional Las Vegas, and... Uh, you know, I, I miss the, the the smaller middle towns, you know, uh, the heartland, as they say. Yeah. I, I do miss that, but but you never know. We'll have to do another all-star guitar night. We yeah. had some great time we'll doing to that, do that, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, and, and next time, yeah, maybe we'll see if we can put something together. Oh, uh, I wanted to say hello to some folks. Uh, somebody asked about this guitar. This is a... Uh, I haven't played this one before. This is a beautiful new for me. It's a Klein Kaufman guitar made by Steve Klein and Steve Kaufman. Uh, and uh, isn't that lovely? Look at this. Just, uh, and uh -huh. it's unamplified. So it just is. is yeah, it speaks. It no, really does. Really it's sings, very even. It? It's very even with the response. Yeah. Really like the way that sounds. And uh, I'll. Uh, have to use the, these cheaters with this little uh, little print here, but I want to I want to say some hello to to folks before we forget. And uh, yes, um, <laughs> and uh, we've got some uh, some folks saying hello to each other, and, and uh, <laughs> um, we're talking about humidity and guitar and guitars and that sort of thing. And uh, yes, especially when we have instruments like this, we have to keep the humidity. I, I keep between forty and sixty percent, and you. I I 
I just wait until something bad happens and then fix it. <laughs> and then you fix it. <laughs> and I yes. should give credit for this. This is a Boulder Creek. You can't quite see the headstock there, but uh, oh, okay. so, there, yeah. we go. there we go. Uh, it, Boulder Creek uh, guitar, which I think the best thing about it is the first few of these acoustic bass guitars had sound holes here or sometimes down here, but this one has one here, so I get to hear it. Yeah. Which really makes a difference, and uh, it sounds good plugged in, it sounds good by itself, and I've written quite a few songs on it, just going, hey, I'm not a guitar player, but I can, you know, I can just write a song, and if you got a bass line and a melody, it's a song, and nobody said you had to have all those extra strings, although I do have 8 string and 12 string basses, I have about 60 basses, oh, yeah, wow. and I've made three records, solo records, where bass parts are doing everything it started with a song called the day the bass players took over the world so i've made three records where i have nothing but bass parts playing the roles of every other instrument including playing it like a drum and all kinds of things so the last record i think had 41 different basses on it and uh, uh and it's really it's it's fun to be uh you know just creative with that and i you know i started playing the bass a lot of a lot of bass players started out on guitar and switched to bass because nobody wanted to be the bass player but to me the bass is infinite so i I play a little bit of guitar, but it, but I never have considered myself a guitarist because I know so many great guitar players such as yourself. So it's uh -huh. it to me the bass was just I I never stop learning every time I play it. I figure out something that I didn't understand before that a new way to do something and and uh, you know right. I've written a few instrumentals that I call bass folk songs where they're sort of uh, these mellow things and so you know I to, to me it's it's all about. The you know the instrument the instrument is a channel, yeah. And you just channel yourself. And in my case, it's low, it's a little lower than the norm. <laughs> yeah. So we are having hellos from people from all over the world here. Oh, how nice! From very dry climates to very wet climates. I, <laughs> yes. my instruments have have suffered from that going back yes. and forth before too. Yes, and. Uh, yeah. So greetings and uh, yeah, sailing dreams. Uh, oh, thank you. I'm glad you you like that. That uh, I especially love the way Susie sings it. I mm -hmm. tell you, I'm I'm partial to that. So uh, yeah, recording. me too. And uh, we do have a, a big announcement for today that we are announcing a new contest for you creative people. That we are going to be making some more board games, and with that, we're going to do 54 new cards. Now, on the cards, there are multiple choice questions some of them are funny and then some of them are sailing uh, experiences and some of them are interaction with the other players those are our favorite ones and uh, just send uh, me an email with your card suggestions and you will be credited on the card and we will have one person uh, just randomly chosen from everyone who submits uh, will win a, a special edition autographed uh, board game and you haven't seen the board game yet. I have, have not. You, you no, have not. I'll, no, well, I'm, maybe I'm when not. you're. I feel like I'm missing something here. Yeah. <laughs> I'll run and get one if you, uh, maybe while you're playing a solo piece. Sure. I'll run and get yeah, a board game. So anyway, uh, s send it to Muriel at murielanderson.com, dot com, um, and then uh, Pamela will put everyone into a, a big Easter basket, and then uh, once we get to fifty four cards done, and then uh, we will choose a winner and announce it on wow. Monday Live. Interesting. Yeah. That's pretty wild. So I, I, I didn't know that, but it's you know, well, I just have to learn like everybody else. Well, I you guess. know, it doesn't. <laughs> uh, if you do an album about sailing, don't you think it should come with its own board game? I never thought of that, but yeah, I like it. Yeah, you know, right, I, yeah. I think you know, there's got to be a base version of that somewhere. You know? <laughs> okay. I have to think about that. All right. <laughs> well, I'll leave you to, to play something. Okay. Like, well, I'm um, enjoying you halfway. Well, through. since I've referenced it twice already, maybe I'll. I'll do the song uh, that, that started me off this crazy journey of trying to do it all with the bass. Uh, a great songwriter named Guy Clark uh, was someone I worked with uh, very early on, and uh, he was my speed bump on the way to Don Williams um, in that, you know, his songs were so powerful yet so simple, and I had come from a very progressive, you know, like prog rock, jazz, lots of stuff. And so Guy helped me understand the power of the lyric and how to calm down. And one day, long after I'd started working with Don, uh, you know, we still work together occasionally with, with Guy. And he called me and says, you know, I need you to come over and play you a song. And I'm like, Guy, Guy Clark doesn't play people's songs. What's going on? And he had a totally straight face. And he played me this tape of Emily Cates at the Kerrville Folk Festival 
playing a song called The Day the Bass Players Took Over the World, which he knew I would love. Yeah. And so I took it home and I and I listened to it a bunch and I, I kind of rearranged it a little bit and I wrote an additional bridge. And Emily, in her kindness, made me co-writer and publisher for my version of it, which eventually was the version that Chet recorded. So this yeah. is how it goes. The change was subtle and the mood was low key. The sky was overcast, you couldn't hardly see. But the creatures all slid down to a slower frequency. The day the bass players took over the world. We came pouring out of symphonies, orchestras and bands, and every other kind of combo ever known to man. And although it was spontaneous, you'd think it was planned when the bass players took over the world. One day the bass players decided to uprise, tired of being sidemen to all those other guys. So we kidnapped the horn section, spiked the drummer's drinks, and tied up the guitar players with their big old flat wound strings. Although we let Dwayne Eddy off the hook because he played on the low end so much, and then of course Chet got an exception too. <laughs> decided to uprise. Tired of being stepped on by all this techno jive, so we erased the memories of all those drum machines and locked away the keyboards and the sampling things. And this is where I go into a little rant about if you got a computer with a button on it that says bass and you book it you push that button and it goes plunk. That is not a bass. You gotta have a big old string and you gotta whack that thing. And the thing about bass is, if we're wrong, everybody's wrong. So it's a lot of responsibility. <laughs> and the other part is, we can make you dance. And so the world was finally set free. The animals all hung out and interacted fretlessly. <laughs> And the air began to vibrate with such a deep tonality. The day the bass players took over the world. The day the bass players took over the world. The day the bass players took over the world. Look out, here we come. And that's how it goes. <laughs> Well, <laughs> I can't think of a better way to end this. Uh, well, my pleasure to be here, and, and yeah. thanks for asking me. We will be doing a new Nashville Musicians podcast starting soon, and oh, we'll yeah. have to get you out to do oh, one. To uh, do. We, we're I'm just getting going with it, so look under Nashville Musicians, um, and we're very excited about that. And, you know, there's a lot of great stuff going on in the world, and we got to focus on the positive, and I think there's just way too many... People, as a good friend of mine says, it's much easier to throw stones than it is to catch them. Yeah. And I think we got to all just remember that we've got a lot more in common than, than we have differences. And music is one of those things that can bring people together in ways where it, two people who, if they had a conversation, would immediately get into an argument, can be dancing like crazy in a concert venue digging the same music. we got to remember that. It's powerful. And it's important for us to be nice to each other. Yeah. I mean, I know it's crazy. Andrea from Austria is just texting in saying that, yes, it, music really does bring us together. Absolutely. Yes. Well, yes. It's my pleasure to be here. I really appreciate it. Yes. And uh, you all out there have seen this before, but Dave hasn't seen it. This is the, <laughs> the board game. That goes, and it takes about the same amount of time to play the game as to play the CD. Oh, my gosh. And so uh, it opens up. And then you have the your own personal board game personal based on your new game. album. Yes, and it's. Whoops, I it's had no down. idea that was even possible. And so yeah, and so this is where all the music was written here. This on this little cabin. There's an actual picture of Brian's cabin, and oh, and wow. uh, and along <laughs> this route where we sailed up to to Maine, and so. All the songs were written about these places. So you just didn't imagine the sailing part. You were doing. We did, oh and that's gosh. where the all the uh, all the songs were written. And, and we had adventures there. We we decided to be, pretend we were pirates and, 
and go board this schooner, and that's there's a picture of it right there. Oh, that's so, fantastic! Yeah, you know, and I love that. I love that part of the world. My dad was from Massachusetts, and my mom from New York, and so I've always been fascinated with that part of the world, but yeah. not been out on the water like and that. And here are your cards that you are going to be writing some more <laughs> of these. Okay, so we that's we need great. 54 of these cards, and we have our experience tokens. So the one who gets the most experiences and the most fish and lobster. Uh, that's uh, your, those are your two winners. You really thought this through. Yes, and then of course uh, we have a cord in case some of the some of the cards may ask you to tie a sailor's knot of a certain type. You know, so uh, we'll have that wow. as well. So that's amazing. Yeah, I'm jealous. I'm gonna have to <laughs> come up with that. Uh, you know, but uh, anybody who would like to see some of this crazy stuff that I've done, uh, DavePomeroy.com. We've got videos of the all bass orchestra. The most we ever had on stage was 22 bass players. The mistake was 22 amplifiers. <laughs> we learned. <laughs> it was like, hey, turn down. Which one? Uh, but, yeah, there's a lot of fun, goofy stuff on there and some other things, too. And yeah. encourage anybody who doesn't know about the Musicians Union, the AFM, to go to NashvilleMusicians.org. And you can see that it's, it's a thing that it's, really does help people. And when you can get people paid for something that happened a long time ago, it's called intellectual property before that was a term, and it really can make a difference. Uh, so many examples of that. James Burton cut a song, cut an album on a day that Elvis had a toothache, and then and a song from there, an instrumental song, came out in the movie Ford versus Ferrari, and they've made about fifteen thousand dollars a piece in residuals. The musicians who played played on it with James and their beneficiaries, and getting people paid is almost as much fun as playing the band. <laughs> Oh, how can it come, come anywhere that close? So after we sign off, uh, David and I may jam on a couple more tunes. <laughs> so if I can Great document to to staying a, a few more minutes. But uh, so long to you all. And be sure to tune in next uh, next Monday, uh, 6 o'clock Central. And a uh, half hour later is the listening party. So I hope you'll uh, stay and join me for that. Okay? So see you then. Bye. Now. Bye. Oh, you can sign up also at... Uh, MuralAnderson.com slash sailing if you want. So we'll see you there. Bye.